So I guess I had to press that like button because <laughs> it's half past uh, 11 here in Japan. Um, well, welcome to the session. I believe it could be only two of us. Hopefully uh, uh, the other uh, panelists will join us uh, in, a, in a while. Um, but uh, very nice to um, and welcome you to the panel. Uh, it's on Gen Z. It's a big topic. Uh, I myself is not a Gen Z, uh, I'm a millennial. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I would like to know more about you now. But, um, uh, uh, but, you know, I think first of all, I think we should do a quick introduction on ourselves um, uh, and a little bit understand about our background so we could put this in context. It's a big question. So um, uh, please, maybe Neha, maybe you could quickly introduce yourself, please. So uh, my name is Neha. I am um, the third generation family business. Um, so it's so we're into our, our group name is the APJ Satyans Faran group. And we are an old family group. My grandfather started. I mean, it's, it's spread into education, pharmaceuticals, real estate. And we've been um, active for a large number of years in India. We've we hired 10,000 plus people. We, um, we are uh, in different sectors. And so we come from... Um, different experiences we talk about today in terms of youth. Uh, I myself am 35 years old, so I don't know where I classify in terms of this, uh, in, in terms of uh, generations. However, I would use this time, and, I mean, for today's session to, to talk more from personal experience and to see where we stand, uh, focusing a lot on uh, how hiring of employees, I thought everything, you know, how hiring has changed, how people have changed, how mindsets have changed. Uh, I work a lot in construction, so we have uh, we are one of the oldest uh, education institutions in India. Uh, my grandfather started, uh, I mean, the idea in India was education was, uh, was not available in a lot of the cities. And so his vision was to provide a school wherever, you know, buses couldn't reach or at, at that point the area was not developed so that, you know, he could try to make sure that there is access, you know, and then it's up to people to send their kids or not. So he did that. And, the, and now, I mean, today we are, we are well known. We're well known in the north. We're well known overall. So um, that's the background about us. I have my uh, bachelor's from Stanford. I'm an economics major, and I did my PhD in finance uh, in the US in Switzerland. So, and I've been working for uh, now 15 plus years. We in, in our family group, we start fairly early. Uh, so we've been pretty much in the office since we were uh, even 10. <laughs> I would I don't 10 or 12. So we're very used to the concept of uh, how businesses work and. Uh, when, when, when I formally came in, I was already used to it. So, yeah, go, go ahead. So, I mean, yes, yes. Well, thank you very much for your introduction. I think, you know, one of the overlaps that we have is that something we can talk about the hiring because this is, I think, something both of us would do. But it is interesting that you have um, a cross relevance, meaning like you do education, you know, as well as you hire these people. Uh, into your uh, family businesses. I think it would be very interesting to hear from educational point of view as well. Uh, I myself have a, a, a root in India. Uh, I'm half Indian, half Japanese. Oh, okay, interesting. So I'm a second generation uh, Indian living in Japan. Um, and uh, we both categorize as a, a Gen Y, which is millennials. So uh, it is interesting that how the defined generation as 15 years. Uh, because typically uh, in Japan, we define them in 30 years uh, because, you know, you tend to get married around 30 and you have kids and goes around in a circle. Oh, do we have a... Okay. Still two of us. Great. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's good that we both belong to the same um, uh, Gen Y uh, category. It would, would have been nice if we had somebody from Gen Z speak about uh, uh, Gen Z. Um, but my background, uh, actually also in finance. So, uh, again, there's another overlap with, uh, uh with your career. Um, it's, it's, it's funny. we I feel like we're doing a lunch club meeting, you know, only <laughs> two of us. <laughs> I don't know if you tried one of those before. Uh, but anyways, um, I think we do have a lot of overlaps. Um, so let us, uh, uh define Gen Z as a, a person between age, uh, year, uh, sorry, nine years old to 24. Right. So just... Yeah, about that's, that's it. starting a job and you know um so having said that i think you know the the topics today uh is to do with the, you know first i think we need to understand the question question correctly right um so do you feel like um internet and sns has really frenzied the uh so social attitude of uh gen z or is this like 
Well, let me answer this like, you know, I mean, I don't know if I'm answering the question correctly, but, you know, mm-hmm. when we were young, we didn't have access to uh, all these internet platforms, right? When we were studying, we had to go to the library. We, uh, we were curious, more curious, I would say, in a weird way, because we actually had to work harder to get a lot of information. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when I look at the generation today, uh, things are available. Like, uh, I'll just give a small example of trigonometry. So I remember mm-hmm. all my trigonometry till today because we had no choice. Uh, I remember what sine 30 is. I remember what sine 45 is. Uh, I mean, I'm, of course, I'm fond of maths, but the reason I did we did that was that we had to. We had to remember our tables. You know, if, if I look at math, if you look at sciences, we had to learn a lot more. And today, I think the education system has changed a lot. And because there's technology and kids just go on, online, they go online to get like the even smallest basic answers uh, possible. Uh, especially I can say for India, because we were very used to a lot of learning, like lots mm-hmm. and lots of learning and lots of, you know, I don't know if there's a positive and a negative to that. But mm-hmm. today it's become uh, a very different environment where uh, you can just simply get information by sitting there. And so this it's created some sort of a complacency. I wouldn't mm-hmm. call it laziness, but I would call it like there's a positive to it, of course, because people are moving a lot faster, like in terms of like a nine year old today compared to like a nine year old, you know, 20 years ago, uh, or even a 15 year old today has far more information uh, than I used to have or than you know, I, I guess both of us had. And so if, if you talk about, you know, suddenly I can, I can find myself discussing technology, discussing a business with a 14 year old, uh, you who knows who understands far more than what we used to understand at that age because we just didn't have that reading we had to we, we were we were stuck with our what was accessible to us which were the books uh, which mm-hmm. was what the teacher taught us uh, which was what our parents you know in our case uh, in my family we were very quickly exposed to a lot of things because we and generally are were uh, we were lucky to be a very dynamic family an education family so we were at the age of 10 you know taught you know kind of treated at 20 like kind of come to the office, understand this is how things work, this is what accounting is, and all that. But today, I think I, I find that a positive that um, a lot of the youth who uh, ha- are interested, they have the access to it, and they don't need to pay for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can s- simply take online courses. Uh, I, I, my nephew is 11. Or, uh, he takes online courses, which are for 17-year-olds or college, you know, 18-year-olds as well. So sure. that, that access today is, is commendable, what, what it mm-hmm. used to be. So, I mean, answering your question about the Internet, I think, I mean, there's a negative and a positive and I'm not going into uh, also a lot of, you know, wrong information, which is also out there on the Web and a lot of uh, control that parents need to exert today. Uh, if I'm looking at you know, this, this 14, 15 year old age, uh, a lot of violence, uh, a lot of other things as well, which which is there. So, I mean, okay. just going just going into, you know, what Internet can bring. I mean, it's, it depends on how we uh, are able to manage today our youth. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so you think there has been an impact in social, social attitude of Asian youth. Um, but, you know, it's kind of interesting because you, you've been born and raised in India, but you've been educated uh, in also Europe and the U.S. And you've probably seen the changes over there. Also, uh, do you think this is, this is more relevant in Asian context? I mean, if you put this in Asian context, is it any different from uh, what you see in, the, in Europe and in the U.S.? Or any other places that uh, you're you're actively visiting. Well, the internet, to be fair, has almost a similar kind of an. Uh, in my opinion, I mean, I I could uh, has a similar kind of an impact on mm-hmm. all the youth. Uh, mm-hmm. What is happening is that. Um, well, the, the question, I mean, it's, it's more about like the Asian attitude versus the European attitude versus, you know, an American, uh, like American born child. So, I mean, there, there's more openness, there's more access, you know, generally in the schooling system is very different uh, mm-hmm. than our schooling system. So there is a little, I mean, depending on which, uh, what you follow, but I overall, I personally feel that internet or access to data is kind of, it's almost similar today. And I think this is also causing perhaps a more interchange of cultures like like easier interchange of cultures because people have access to uh, even communication between uh, uh, different children today like you know my nephew or you know if you look at uh, 15 16 year olds are communicating with people from other countries like very easily so they understand cultures uh, which are flowing is flowing through it. it's not like a culture you know when we went from India to college, there was a little cultural shift and today kids are kind of used to it. So it's, it's you know, so there there's a huge, a whole lot of change coming from the access to internet. But, you know, once you move on to the topic, I would like to focus more on, um, you know, the topic of employees, because that is something which is very pressing. And we hire a lot of interns, you know, 6, 17, 18. And we, we also have a lot of college students who, who are, you know, who, who we, uh, we have a university. So um, our group, we have... Um, when a UGC recognized university in India, we have 
colleges and we 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 are well spread so but in in terms of the employees i would say there there's a drastic drift what i see so if i look at 10 years you know if i look at the 40s and the 50s uh today uh the the mindset uh, there is a whole a huge huge change in what they uh how they perceive a job as opposed to how 20 year old perceives a job mm-hmm. so i think it's partly because Can you I know just feel that uh yeah. says you know this is a topic i'm also very interested in uh for example if you look at japan uh you know japan was quite well known for life t- lifetime employment so uh you know most popular um uh employer uh for f- freshers coming out of college was a uh, uh, bureauc- bureaucracy for example joining a bureaucracy was a very popular uh job option and probably it will be followed by a large corporations who's been there for you know hundreds of years <laughs> and big names so um uh, there's been a big shift in japan uh where uh, a lot of um these freshers out of college are preferring to get into more social uh, uh you know deciding the job opportunity based on the social impacts or maybe uh, uh quick learning skills like entrepreneurships you know joining the startups uh do you see similar kind of trend uh in india uh and and from your students in your uh education system But what is the most popular job Well, you know it used to be finance at one point. I mean it yes. used to be like take an MBA, do an MBA every kid, you know from a even from a village wanted to do an MBA. I mm-hmm. mean that was I mean, studying was like you know try to study, try to study, but now I think it's changing. Um I I I think right now people are a little more diversely focused and like they've more focus a little bit on skill development. I mean a little bit people are understanding the importance of um earning money. But I would still say that there's a lot of emphasis in india still especially in the rural sectors for like doing the mba studying well having that degree having a phd doing you know doing the masters things that psychological impact, i mean it's kind of a psychological thing uh for, for people to do that a lot of people are trying out of uh, to get work experience so um people apply out of college for jobs but in, i think in india it's a little different because i, I remember in switzerland when i when i was there I a, a couple of friends often a lot of them worked after school so a lot of them they they prefer to take a job and they prefer to get that experience and masters and phd and you know even the mba wasn't so much there i mean it was mm-hmm. there but the first focus was let me earn money let me get a job but in india it's always been a little bit more let's get a degree uh-huh. uh, i mean it's kind of an important kind of social economic thing like i need the degree i need a bachelor then even you'd find people in the villages they'll find a way correspondence like we do a lot of interviews uh even an electrician you know even you know i i i work with a lot of because i look in construction sure, sure, sure. so there's a lot of people yeah so that's a grand reality i guess uh, in india still today but would you advise if somebody comes to you uh let's say 15 year old uh and he says i want to start a company uh would you tell tell him to you know wait, wait a second you know go through the college get an mba okay <laughs> find a co-founder and start your project uh would you have the same kind of uh uh would you give that uh, uh same recommendation today uh you know would you do the same thing let's say 10 years ago do you have a different okay. values I mean, and to be fair like for my life experience i i don't believe doing business has anything to do with like a college degree or you know on education so if a 15 year old i mean depending on on the person i'm talking to if this person has um the required mindset of what a business of how to do a business is and depending mm-hmm. on the support systems uh, i think it's not such a i mean i a person can do a business as well like, i know plenty of people who who have, are doing side businesses like i i, I even youth and they they are also simultaneously getting a degree um, i see mm-hmm. this in india all the time even people who you know do jobs so that they often they are like okay we were doing schooling but we were working what kind here. of job what kind of job is a high skill job or is it more like um, you know well, depending on the kind of depend on you're talking about but like a lot of like even village you know people in the villages or even the middle class like sometimes they would try to open something like an electrical store or um mm-hmm. sell some products or do like a uh, you know licensing of a certain thing and if they have access to it they try it and they, a lot of them do it as a side job while they're studying so a lot of them some of them are motivated because their parents had some sort of a business sometimes mm-hmm. even people who their parents have a store or their parents have uh some sort of you know uh, some small company which they're dealing with and these kids are motivated even at the age of 15 16 17 and okay let me do this even if i'm studying mm-hmm. and uh, also there's a lot of ego in terms of like you know not ego is the wrong word but there's a lot of like push sometimes for business families like be it small businesses or large businesses that i don't want a job i want to try to do my own thing so that's kind of mm-hmm. you're seeing that a little more especially if your parents are doing that 
So uh, also parents are discouraging of, you know, I mean, if, if a parent has a business, he, he wants their kid to either go into that business or at least start their own thing because you get used to the mindset of being your own boss mm-hmm. and uh, also growing. So you see that, you know, happening uh, 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 in that. I, I don't know if you if you ask me this question like 10 years ago uh, about what's happening. I think now people are more aware. So I think a, a child who's like 15 right now compared to 10 years ago is, is generally speaking more aware. Than, than what it used to be mm-hmm. so you know so uh the access which even online or people people around or the social communication the communication platforms where you can call anyone uh earlier it used to be you have to email people to get feedback or even to do business you, you had to in india i remember in my grandfather's time you write you wrote telegrams you wrote letters for to the authorities to get land and you and it, it, it used to take months and I, I you know it's, it's astonishing to see people did that and they were patient and in our generation in aid, you pick up the phone and, you know, you're running five businesses at a time. Uh, you, you can suddenly tomorrow decide, OK, I want to do partnership again. You have the paperwork ready. You're signing online. You're sending everything. Uh, in COVID, we were even quicker. Um, and I, I mean, we realized that you can actually do multiple things and you're more efficient. And so, I mean, today, of course, it's, if you had to, if I had to answer the question today, of course, it's even it's much easier. But what, what I think what youth lack right now, I feel like I'm not I'm not generalizing this, but what we're seeing is, is that patience. You know, because the, the access to things are so quick, like, I mean, maybe because of technology and partly, you know, the growth of digital, the digital world as well that parents have become a little more pushing, uh, providing everything that our generation, I think we had a lot more slogging, if you put the right mm-hmm. word, and that taught us a little more perseverance. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm talking more psychological, you know, from the psychological standpoint. And somewhere, I hope, I mean, this might, it's a little bit of a fear for me as well for our country, but also, I, I mean, other countries that uh, I think somewhere I wish we uh, can battle that because what's happening, I've seen in the office, like, you know, an employee joins who's 21 years old and he's like, I'm unhappy. 15 days, I'm happy. I want to resign. Uh, earlier, you know, uh, we we had people who would be unhappy for six months. They, they, you know, they waited, they got their position and they is went. It, and is it a bad thing? Is it a bad thing? Would no. you like to have a... a, a- you know, 21 year old, very unhappy employee working I mean, in your organization? No, of course not. I mean, we don't want, we want positive energy, right? So that's in the interview process. I take a lot of interviews of a lot of people at different levels. And when I see an unhappy person in an interview, I'm already a little scared because mm-hmm. he brings an unhappiness to the team. But at the same point, you know, sometimes it takes time for socially to feel comfortable in a workspace. And, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I, there was a need for money. There was like that hunger, which the older generation had. There was a respect for a company. And mm-hmm. what you did was you tried. You tried for two months. You made an effort. You met people. You you tried to make your way through. But, you know, it's, it's like the whole marriage framework, right? Today, it used to be like people didn't have divorces. And now people are like, in one month, I'm done. So it's the same mm-hmm. thing in the workspace. It's like, I don't want to deal with this. I have, you know, 50 other opportunities. I will try. I'm, you know... I have a, you know, I, I can go here, I can go here, I can go here, which is a great thing. Mm-hmm. But I also feel that somewhere people lose out on good jobs because often what happens is that there are people who left us at in one month, you know, just in a month without even trying to push their way through or even understanding, uh, you know, that things flow and, you know, sometimes people take time, you know, you're if you're if you're a 21 year old and you have a team where there's a boss who's 50 and there's somebody who's 40, it takes time for everybody to integrate and people to be comfortable. And somewhere it's a psychological process and you have to give that. And somewhere now, I mean, um, can I, can I ask you this question since you're running a family business, right? So family business is something that you, you are working on the confined rule because you, you have a family, you know, they have their values. Uh, they might could be more conservative in a way, like they might not want you to do something that you feel passionate about, for example. I mean, I'm not talking about all cases. So like there is a, a bit of a, um, uh, pros and cons here. And, uh, you know, um, my understanding with the youth here, particularly in Japan, I think India is a very different context, right? Because the family is very, very strong. Uh, whereas in Japan is, uh, uh, uh more, uh, we have a, a stronger connection with the friends, you know, the, the, uh, college, you know, college, uh, alumni and, you know, the people who joined the same year at the university or the, the work, you know, those horizontal relationship is very, very strong in Japan. So I think, you know, if when you talk about uh, Asia generally, it's, you know, on the east side, you know, the East Asian countries and, you know, where you see in South Asia, uh, very, very different. And, um, and obviously, Southeast Asia, again, is very, very different. So, so having said that, like, you know, since you're working um, uh, in a family business, my father also uh, has his own business, but I decided not to join my family uh, because I wanted to 
pursue my own interest. <laughs> so I, I, I might, I might uh, uh, had a, a different uh, um, uh, options. Uh, whether that that was good or bad, I mean, never know, right? I mean, you know. <laughs> uh, but the fact that I have the flexibility and um, um, actually uh, spend most of my time on the project that I really want to pursue. So uh, that question to you, um, you know, uh, since you are in family business and you're also um, in millennial generation and the follow, following generation is much more short-term thinking, more purpose-driven, I would say, uh, if you want to turn that into a, a, a good language. Uh, and uh, maybe they're more authentic, right? You know, they, they could express things that they feel uh, more openly with others uh, before they could have done that with only maybe siblings or close, close friends, but that now they bring that to a work environment, you know? <laughs> so, um, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm just a little bit curious uh, from your experience, uh, you know, what your, you know, um, what, how you, your, your um, experience uh, being part of the family business and uh, uh, what you see for the future, because obviously, <laughs> you know, there will be a time that the uh, uh, majority of population will be uh, Gen Z people, right? So, so you would have to deal with them and they will be all your customer too. So. <laughs> so I was, I mean, at some point I was Gen Z. I mean, I was in that age group as well. So I mean, I'll just start from my, like our journey generally. So I'm the youngest, uh, I'm 35, I have two older brothers. We, have both, we all of us went to Stanford. So we all have that education. Uh, you know, we were all pretty well educated. And um, of course, I was the last one to join, like to officially join because I was studying, I was doing my PhD and everybody was there. Um, our family business, you know, we were always raised in a manner to kind of to be groomed, uh, uh, to be able to join that. Of course, there was if some of if we decided to do something else, it wasn't like, you know, there would be a hatred or something. It was just that uh, generally speaking, you know, there was so much emotion that we grew up with and hearing about it, like, you know, family, in a, I don't know if you, in a typical family business environment where everybody's working, my mom's like the chairperson, uh, my, my, you know, my grandfather was there, you know, all of us working together. It's, you grow up in that culture. So you kind of look forward to it. Even when you're studying, you're like, okay, I'm someday I'm going to come back. But um, what typically happens uh, as, you know, in family businesses that people don't lose, don't give up control. Like your older generation, they don't give up control. And as a Gen Z or, you know, that's, that's the biggest challenge people face. And a lot of my friends uh, always resisted uh, coming to their family businesses because they had all this education and they had all these ideas. And uh, even their parents, even though were welcoming, but they wouldn't be ready uh, to adopt a lot of those practices. I think if I talk about my personal experience, I think I was very lucky. I'm um, because my mom's really dynamic as a person, and she uh, she kind of wanted all of us to have our own space uh, in the business. I would say that my brother, like the first brother who got in, he kind of had to fight his way through a bit because he just got in and he was like, "I want this, I want this," and you know, it's, it's a process, right? Because you are dealing with an older generation, you're dealing with. Um, more experienced individuals, uh, in, in our case, our parents, or you know, and who who are a little afraid that you you, know, you you don't give you a million dollars that okay go do something, but they want to be sure, uh, they want to be confident. And in uh, in 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 my case, when I came in during my PhD after finishing my PhD, I my first project was to handle a construction site, uh, which was basically we would lose it if I hadn't finished the construction in time. And I knew zero about construction. I was a finance PhD, and it was all about dealing with people. It was all about using my mind and trust. And I was going there and I was, you know, figuring it out. So I got like complete independence uh, from day one when I came in. I came in at, you know, officially came in at 25, but I was handling a lot of the manpower uh, related issues since I was 15. So uh, I would say the challenge I faced not so much from my, in my case, wasn't so much from my, from my family, but from employees is because I was younger. I was 24, 25 when I started to handle this big project and I had access to everything. And they were like, oh, my God, this girl, she's, she's very young. Uh, why should we listen to her? And, you know, like, you know, she doesn't have any experience. She doesn't know the industry. And so you, you go through that. I think you go through that. People underestimate that because my friends or uh, especially I talk to my friends, they're like, oh, you have your life easy. Uh, you're, you know, you're in your family business. They have respect to you. You're paying them. Uh, so it, it, the biggest challenge is actually to gain respect, like to be able to 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 be to be heard, uh, mm-hmm. even though you are heard, of course, I mean, I mean, you can fire who you want. But at the same time, it's a team, right? I mean, for me to be successful in the projects I'm doing, uh, there has to be trust. Uh, mm-hmm. And to build that trust up as a young person 
you know, it takes time. It takes, you know, a lot and lots of talking. It takes, you know, them seeing that she's there, she's doing it, she's understanding, is listening to different people. So I actually, the way I went about it is I actually let a lot of people kind of advise me, even though I knew the advice was not really the right one in, in my gut. I still let them kind of do it. I let them go through that circle. Uh, at the same time, I didn't let us make a loss. So I kind of like let, I had to play that role where I listened a lot to a lot of older, you know, um, we had engineers and we had like some senior advisors and things like that. But in the end, you know, once this project was over, I also had a lot of fights because, you know, it was our money. <laughs> and I thought they were really going to run us down and they were not paying for it. I was. And so but in the end, I think all of I mean, I gained a lot of um, like now when I'm doing something, it's like they understand. I mean, I'm still listening. You still have to listen a lot. But at the same time, you know, it, it was a whole journey for me. Uh, to be able to stand there and, you know, and get that. Of course, having a PhD in my case helped because, I mean, I'm glad I had that degree because without that, I mean, it's very tough. Uh, my friends face that too in their family offices. Um, women face that a lot, uh, in, especially in the construction space because there are not many women. So when, you, and but like men, I, I overall, if you're in your 20s or in your 30s, even, you know, there are people who are 70s, you know, and they're advising and it's tough for them. I would say it's tough for them to accept, uh, even if, if you, even if you're being the most humble person, uh, it's not easy. So, I mean, challenging that. But if I look at other family businesses, I, if I look at my friends, I think they've had a very hard time with parents uh, because um, they've had to fight. There's been a lot of ego battles, especially between men and fathers. Uh, uh, when you know, even though it is, it, I, I don't know why that is, to be honest, but it is there. And somewhere, I hope that situation improves because that's leading to a lot of younger generation, like like younger entrepreneurs, like really smart people. Like a lot, a lot of these kids have money. A lot of these kids go to, go to good schools. So you know, like we went to Stanford, went to good schools, and it's a waste of education when you can't build your business empire head, uh, and you can't, you know, you cannot. Like in my, in our case, we are dynamic. We have real estate. We have we have education as a part of. I mean, what we do in a nonprofit, we have pharmaceuticals. Uh, we are open to entering any other business we want to enter, and we are three of us. We can pretty much decide that if we want to. But uh, if you don't get that access, it's it's a waste. It's a waste of education. It's a waste of resources. So I I really hope uh, in in um, in times to come. I mean, I think things are already improving because I think in the end you want your generations to go ahead. But still, I think we're dealing with. I th I don't think it's India itself. Like I did a lot of. Um, I have some friends who are in Italy and France and all these countries, mm -hmm. and family businesses have this common problem where, you know, that succession, uh, mm -hmm. uh, doing it effectively. Uh, mm -hmm. Giving that, you know, giving charge versus, you know, like their, their, their parents who give like complete charge and then kids have destroyed the fortunes that, you know, that's happened as well. But, you know, that that whole balance of how to integrate uh, mm -hmm. a younger generation, I think that still has a lot of work, I think, to be done in India as well and and overall. Mm -hmm. So tell me about Japan. Thank I mean, for, yeah, thank you for the inputs. You know, one of my close friends, he's also a third generation uh, business family in India and and uk uh and uh, uh he said one thing I, which i really left a mark uh in my thinking is that he said every generation is a first generation so um i think that's a really good um uh you know a line for every family <laughs> business because uh environment is constantly changing and um i'm sure that there are some value add that each generation can give and uh, uh, it's also not really good to categorize a generation because, you know, even within the generation, <laughs> there's a lot of variety. Uh, however, um, you know, I'm kind of curious because, you know, the Western world, they put generation if, as a 15 years. Uh, whereas in Japan, uh, we, we look at maybe a generation based on, um, uh, you know, a depression that we had, right? You know, no growth for over 20 years. We call that one generation sometimes. Uh, and we call the internet generation. So we, we add these uh, very um, important lifetime events and you put together into generation. Whereas like in the US, they they tend to put like boomer, gen X, gen Y, gen Z, gen a, which goes every 15 years. So like uh, 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 if you can speak from Indian context, like uh, when you look at the younger um, uh, age people, and you think, okay, this is my generation, and this is younger generation. Do you have any kind of uh, uh, age variance there? Like, I mean, would you say people twenties? Would you call that different generation? Uh, how would you categorize that? Because I think that's quite an important question to think about when we uh, discuss the final and very important uh, question. Well, I'm, I, I uh, so what's happened? Uh, sorry, in in my in our, the way I look at it, to be fair, like ten years is also a generation. Because that's how things how that's how quick things are moving. Mm -hmm. uh, 
know, with the technology access that they had versus what we had. So in my case, you know, the people who grew up in our generation, we basically just had the cell phone coming in when I was in like mm-hmm. 10th, 11th grade. And there was a lot more, there was a different type of parenting also. Mm-hmm. But even even just crossing 10 years, I think you see a huge change in how, you know, the approach of thinking, the mindset, even the education policies changed a lot. So uh, even though like 30 years for us, for me personally, is very, very long. It's almost like two generations. But like today, even 10 years, like you, you see it, like when you talk to, I'm 35, I talk to a 25 year old, it's still, it's still a very different type of mentality, development and all those things. So, I mean, um, I would definitely look at a, a younger uh like a, a quicker generational, like a quicker, like more like 10, 10 year ones, which are happening. And it's not so much to do with, par- it's, it's to do with a little bit of changes in parenting and things like that. It's also to do with like the access, the change in access, the quicker access to everything. So you have like a lot more things happening, even in the schooling systems, like we, it's much, it's much faster. People have access to more, um, more events. Uh, the growth is just faster. Like you have, um, business entrepreneurship courses happening at a very young age uh we didn't have access to all those things uh of course i mean from from depending on your family you always got access to these things but now it's just that everyone does have it if they want to have it and so you know in, i would answer that question to say like i de- i even see a change in five years if you really ask me sometimes when you, when you talk to a, a, a child you, you see that so but mm-hmm. there's a lot i mean i think this, this topic is very vast i mean i would say since we run schools uh, as well i notice the lo- a lot of the changes in how you think is to do with parenting. Mm-hmm. So that's a whole new topic uh, mm-hmm. again. So that's also creating uh, this whole new type of parenting, which is happening, which was not happening earlier. And that mm-hmm. has also caused uh, a huge dynamic and change in how, you know, youth is coming up to be. Okay. So, so I'm very interested. So what's, what's the new type <laughs> of parenting? What is, I, what is I, I, I can't generalize, but you know, parents were much more involved. I would say mm. in our generation that we, they were not involved. We had, big families so you know mm-hmm. you like i grew up like we are three of us we grew up with the grandparents so you always had a role model at home you had you know you had you watched you know, perseverance you watched people go to office you watched them come back you watched there was a lot of ethics and moral immoral discussed at home and today you know if you look at the nuclear families which are coming up which are coming up more and more so i mean the tolerance to live with the family is very less so mm-hmm. if you look at the youth right now they're they don't have that experience. They don't have the experience of families. They don't have that experience of parents, even sometimes living uh, uh, like a mother at home. Women are working. So uh, most of the time they're with nannies or they're, you know, they're somewhere else or they're sitting at home watching TV and not very good TV uh, or, you know, on even if they're doing educational resources, it's not what it used to be. So you can immediately see that uh, when these, these youth, when they come into the workforce, they have no experience of what to expect. Uh, mm-hmm. they, their par- they, of course, they are educated, and some of them might be a ninety percent, or they might have A plus grades uh, academics. But academics actually, we end up not uh, hiring a lot of people who are even very smart in terms of the degrees because they just can't perform. And mm-hmm. the reason they can't perform is they just don't have that experience at home. They have the upbringing of even the social environment of how to behave and how to be. They do, they don't they lack that basic skill set. So somewhere, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I, what, it's difficult to generalize because every home is different. Every city is different. I mean, a, a village mm-hmm. uh, in, in the small villages, it's different. But mm-hmm. I, I can tell you for the cities, like if I look at Delhi, uh, Mumbai. Why, why why is that happening? Is it, is it also relevant because of the Internet and SNSs? Uh, well, the because laziness. people are not really, you know, um, uh, wanting to have a stronger uh, family connections. Uh, is this because of the Internet and SNS? Well, it is uh, well partly it's very convenient now for parents like you just put your kid on an online course and you don't have to spend so much time with them uh, i think the access to like i think it's you know it's not as exciting to be at home anymore for uh, for mother it's like or or father for that matter they they prefer to internet has become an easy way to get away uh, from your family from your family responsibilities so so, wait, wait, so so the parents are not doing those i don't know whether they call it duties or those tasks uh, uh, because they're both working, uh, they're out of home, or are they actually uh, at home, but they're just doing something else? Well, yeah, so the partly, like, the internet is distracting to all, right? So now you have all these TV shows, movies, and things like that, so you have, like, housewives doing that, and they're like, okay, I'd rather... <laughs> <laughs> You didn't have TV, so like, we like, okay, I have nothing to do. I'm let me just raise my child, and now she's like, oh my God, I have so many things to do. So why should I waste my time? You know, doing all this effort. I have a maid. I have ex. You know, I'm just talking about like typical Delhi family, and you know, my kid will just get raised somehow, and then I pay a lot of money to the school whose job is to just teach my kid and you know do all that. So mm-hmm. that basic upbringing, what a parent used to do, 
Mm-hmm. And that, that's not happening, and and partly like internet, I mean, is used in in a in a positive space, but it also in a, in in, a, in a, and but also then there are the other parents like who want to work. So women actually uh, in the last ten fifteen years they are really working a lot. I mean, you have a middle class families who uh, both parents are working. I mean, which is happening a lot more earlier in our culture. Women were kind of expected uh, to get married, and and she was kind of the mother who stayed home and takes care mm-hmm. of you know. Children. So so I think it's very in, very interesting thesis you're given because it it seems that Gen Z. Is been um, affected by internet SNS because of the change in mindset of parents, right? Not necessarily because of because of the Gen Z themselves, because they have the most influence by the family, how they parent their kids. So, so actually, when you look at this problem, maybe maybe we are we are looking at the wrong problem because it seems that this uh, uh, question that we have been given uh, is saying because of internet SNS, these Gen Zs. Are behaving, you know, more in uncontrolled way, frenzy way. Uh, but in fact, what's really happening is that the parents are being affected, um, you know, affected by the internet and SNS. Therefore, they are, you know, um, uh, uh, taking different preference and priorities uh, in life, which is breaking down the social norms and, you know, strong family relationship which existed in India before. And uh, uh, that's a very, I think, very, very insightful uh, comment you made. And if you look at Japan's context, so um, um, uh, so we, I just talk about the most popular jobs freshers are looking into. And if you look at Gen Zs, there is a census given that uh, uh, these people at primary school, uh, what is the most popular job today? It's actually YouTuber. <laughs> Wow. So, so there's been a great change over the past three, four, five years. Um, people spend less time on TV. They shift into YouTube, and uh, uh, since YouTube was a, a pretty uh, open space, now they have a YouTube Kids. You could restrict the kids from seeing certain contents, but parents didn't know and they didn't have those tools. Like if you look back three, five years ago, so so YouTube is becoming a really popular uh, um, job option for this uh, uh, Gen Z. Uh, in in Japan, and um, uh, you know what I hear from my, so I I have a two and a half year old son, um, and uh, um, I I started family a little bit uh, uh, late, and um, uh, so so my friends who are having their kids uh, in primary schools and middle school, uh, they are saying like, you know, uh, Aki, I'm actually very afraid. I don't know my 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 kids. They don't go out of their room. They actually stay inside. And they're looking into internet, and they're not showing me what they're doing on the internet. And and back in my generation, you know, kids were afraid. Uh, sorry, the parents were afraid that kids were not, you know, uh, they don't know what they're doing outside of home, you know. <laughs> but now the space has really got into uh, internet, and 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 making it even harder for parents to really have that good communication with the with the with the kids. So um, uh, it's 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 funny, you know. It's kind of interesting to see the comparison between Japan and India. Uh, but do you think, uh, you know, this is the last question, which was uh, uh, on the uh, uh, on this uh, topic uh, today, was that whether these need, uh, these things needs to be restricted or uh, regulated? And this has been a very big question, even in the U.S., uh, with the recent, you know, whistleblowing on Facebook uh, about the Instagram and addictions and depressions and, uh, uh, you know, forcing certain values about the weight and appearance, which is given really uh, uh, bad uh, uh, or negative, uh, you know, social, uh, you know, um, impact. Uh, to the Gen Z population, particularly speaking, so so do you think these um, uh, tools uh, on the internet, uh, including uh, you know SNS, needs to be regulated? I, I definitely think so. I mean, what's happening is like now because of you know giving access to everyone and having this whole like free speech uh, thing happening online. Um, I can you know even from personal example in our house, like you know we have kids playing these video games which are all online access and. Uh, there are all kinds of kids out there. They're adults, and you know, there's a lot of violence happening, uh, which is not, you know, which is not very healthy for kids. So, I mean, in one sense, they definitely we need a lot more happening in terms of the. I mean, there are, as you said, YouTube kids. There are a lot of, 
work happening on the IT front uh, to to have that. But I think there just needs to be a whole new space where you ma- you manage this whole internet space for youth, because even though um, you have you have these various website restrictions you can put on and all that, but it's just uh, a whole new criminal space which is out there, which was never there earlier in our generation. Our generation, as you said, was correct, where like I'm a sports person, I enjoy going out, I used to go for a run. The, the fear was not to meet weird people, uh, you know, and those things like that, and just to restrict yourself, sit in your car, go home. But today you're at home and you're at risk because you don't know who you're talking to. Uh, you don't know, I'm mean, small kids, they don't know uh, even like a 14, 15 year old, they're getting hacked, people are getting hacked, the bank accounts are, you know, that's happening as well even with kids. Um, and, you know, you've had all this thing happening and I think there needs to be a lot of work done, not just, uh, you know, just for certain websites, but I think there needs to be an overall work done for how one can do this in an effective manner for all age groups. So, like, you know, you, you can't have the same uh, because today the access of internet towards to kids is not only uh, 15, 16, 17, 20, but it's also 10, 9, 8, this age group where, they, you know, where they're there. And so there needs to be. Uh, really a lot of focus there and I think that should be the new thing which I think which, I, I feel it's already been worked on but I think that that d- definitely needs to be there okay so somebody's asking a question can I Im- invite yeah. them on the stage I don't know how to do it let me just, just click I think right now um, okay Are you seeing some messages here? No. Okay. No. All right. I just got a mic sign on, so I thought she wanted to speak out. Um, yeah. So, so, yeah. I think I, I agree with you uh, on this topic. Uh, you know, I think it needs to be regulated. It's kind of scary to just hand over a phone and say, "Okay, well, you, 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 you have a free freedom to do whatever you want on the net," and um, um, I think uh, that's not really going to work out. You know. So uh, I, I agree. I, I mean. So just one thing I wanted to mention about this internet just came into my mind was like, you know, we've had this issue a lot because now people have access to Facebook and, and they come in and they start bad mouthing your company. They start bad mouthing. There's like free speech. <laughs> but it's really, it's really, and it did terrorize everybody. And a lot of, you know, now I think the government has introduced like that you can complain, you can lodge a complaint against, you know, a person who writes anything. And earlier we never had this problem where people would just, you know, like somebody wants to spread negativity. They just like sit and, you know, they just like go online and they just, find your website. I mean, this happens to, of course, in Amazon and, you know, other, mm-hmm. you know, professors as well, but it's, mm-hmm. you know, you know, that whole thing needs to be re- regulated because it's creating a whole, it's not a negative environment, but, you know, you just allow anybody to say anything without even any context. And there's no, you know, there's no repercussion for this. So, I mean, mm-hmm. that's another space which has come up because of this whole technology, you know. Thing. Okay. So you, 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 use, yeah. you think that, uh, uh, also negative comments. I mean, I, I I don't know what you mean by negative comments. Uh, I mean, you should not be, you should not be hurting the, uh, you know, about person's appearance or uh, should not be, um, you know, uh, attacking somebody based on genders or something like that uh, certainly should be banned. But are you saying to the extent of, uh, um, uh, you know, I, I don't think we should regulate to the extent that people giving different no, no, opinions or so know, expressing, like expressing feelings? Right. It's just expressing feelings which are not validated, you know, like just um, kind of saying something which is not the truth uh, because people, you know, they're, dis- you know, disgruntled. Sometimes, you know, people have bad day and they just write something. And then, you know, when you reach out to them, they're like, oh, I didn't mean it. You know, that's mm-hmm. happening as well. And um, it's, it's it happened in the hotel space. It's happening otherwise. So I mean, some regulation on what you write should have some truth to it. I mean, in terms of, you know, especially when your businesses, I mean, for us, yeah, it's yeah, fun yeah. issue so much, but. I, mean, I know what you mean. So, so like, for example, if you look at the review sites, right? Um, uh, let's say you have a university X and Y, they're competing, and they might decide to <laughs> pull down the ratings of each 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 uh, uh, university. So, I, I think that kind of thing needs to be stopped. I think we need to have more authentic authenticities. And I think Gen Z are quite uh, sensitive about those those uh, um, authenticities. So, I don't think they're really looking at Google rating and saying, "Okay, this is bad." I don't think they're going to Zomato and saying, okay, this restaurant is bad. I, I don't think they're like, I think they're smarter than that. Um, I think people who have really been affected are the elder people because they, th- they think these are authentic, you know, <laughs> they take it as is. So they're not literal, uh, 
uh, on on internet, and that needs to be, uh, I think, some of the you know the topics. I think more and more, like I speak to you, I feel like you know this education needs to happen at for for the elders, <laughs> including ourselves, uh, and 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 that would we you know really give a good positive loops to the the next generation also. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I mean, uh, it's just that uh, uh, it's, 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 it's difficult to answer this just by a comment about Internet or anything. I think this is an overall change in dynamics of people and how they parent and how uh, what's happening in the world and, you know, the education system and the teachers. And, you know, so this, this whole topic is, 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 is kind of like you have to combine several things to get an outcome out of it. It's not, you know, it, it doesn't happen just by talking about, you know, what we do in the internet or you know what we do that because the whole you know there's a generational change in the parenting as well let's put it that way mm-hmm. so it's not just the you know it's not just the youth yeah 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 so so it's i think it's it's a good summary of the meetings that uh you know <laughs> when gen z is uh um uh it's a new generation and i'm sure that we can learn a lot from them but at the same time i think we are the one who needs to be educated first <laughs> Uh, with regards to how to deal with the internet, so we could, you know, give the right tools uh, for them to uh, brush their skills, you know, build a, a true friendship, you know, um, and avoid risks. Right. So I think those skills, I think we need to learn, so we could educate uh, the next generation how to u- utilize those things. Um, having said that, as a as a wrap up, uh, last question, uh, as a, as a more for my personal interest. So, so um, uh, since you you are running a family business, you're doing many things: uh, education to construction, pharmaceutical. You have also mentioned. Uh, um, what 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 is your passion? Like, which which business do you like the most, and where do you oh, see yourself? Critical. Um, and what do you want to do? You know. Well, I'm not I'm not still doing what I really want to do. If you really ask me, like I still you know mm. because we we basically uh, we have such a big group that we end up firefighting more than you know building sometimes, mm. and we're building, but you know the building is slow because the bigger you get, you end up especially with the laws and the compliances and you know the politics of things in India. Uh, a lot of the family time goes on managing and firefighting and authorities and you know and 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 processes and systems i would say like you know we're we're, we've been working all very hard the last few years in building up processes and systems like from from our generation point of view where we're you know automizing and we we, i'm very glad we did that because covid hit uh so you know we we were automizing a banking system because we're all family group everything was on paper i mean we had automized a lot of it but still a lot of things were signature 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 everywhere Mm -hmm. and that's not a bad thing but we had to bring about a lot of changes. So we've been focusing a lot on doing that. Of course, we've been growing, but I hope like, I mean, for me personally, I would, I mean, I, I enjoy working with a lot of people. So I work with a lot of manpower. I, uh, I believe the best way to do business is to be in touch with everyone across, not just the managers, but be in touch with everyone on the ground. So I try to get a Absolutely. feedback. And of course, it's a lot of energy. And in COVID, I couldn't, I mean, I was doing that a lot on Zoom, uh, being in touch, reaching out, because that's how you, you, I mean, India is like kind of an economy where you need to go deep down, understand what's happening. And then that's how you can work. And that's how you get your output and your success in projects. I, I already know before a manager knows that things are going badly. I mean, that's, that's exactly like if I'm, if I'm working on projects. But uh, would I like to always do this or keep doing this? You know, it's, it's painful <laughs> sometimes because you're, yeah. you know, you're, you're talking and, you know, you're, you're, it, it takes a mind space out of you because um, what's not fun is keep hiring and keep firing people. Like, you know, the whole part of you hire and then they leave or they go. I mean, that's, that's the process we keep trying to optimize in our group where we want to create an environment where people stay. But they are, they are staying. But then, you know, people, they lie. You know, what, what used to be earlier that they would take a job and then they get a salary hike and they continue in another company. So <clears throat> a lot of the ethics is going. So, you know, we hope that India kind of, you know, like in Switzerland or in other countries, people are a little scared to to do these such things. They, they, they have an ethics, but there's also a worry that you lose your reputation. But in India, it's happening a lot more where people take a job and then they move on. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like a shopping environment. And so we're working hard to build. Uh, especially with the new youth to build good teams, to build ethics, to, you know, build that company culture where it become, you know, or from our HR point of view so that we, you know, we can build and grow because we have to rely on these new generation, you know, uh, entrepreneurs coming in who, who can you know, grow for us. And of course, you know, it's a big country, but there's still, it's, it's tough to find that one good person, you know, sometimes, you know, to handle things. So that's how it is. I, I don't have an answer. But I, I do. I would like to get into more businesses, but right now we're just in our own, uh, in, in our own gamut of things. And I think it's a great learning. I'm so I'm very, I'm very happy to have gotten into this because 
what I've learned being a part of this family group, interacting with so many people, uh, having that experience with cross industry, like different, you know, education. We have, you know, professors, we have principals of schools, we have directors, we have, uh, on the other end, I have construction workers, I have labor, I have, you know, labor contractors, everybody. So you get an experience at, you know, at very early on how you deal with different situations. Uh, you get very bullish, you, you get like very strong that, you know, you, you can't operate out of weakness. Uh, so you, you learn to emit an energy that, you know, you have to push things through. Uh, especially in our country. So, I mean, this, these are the learnings that you get only when you get that experience, which I wouldn't have gotten had I just started my own thing, I would say. And, you know, of course, I miss out on that part as well. Mm. Yeah, I think, uh, well, thank you very much. We need to wrap up this session. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think one of the great things about, in, uh, uh, you know, uh, working with Indians is that, is that uh, uh, Indians are very opportunistic. They're, they're very uh, uh, optimistic about the future, uh, typically. And, of course, there are some, you know, family business is very conservative. Uh, you know, but on the other side, what that means is that, you know, uh, the retention is very tough, you know, but there are talents. So, um, and, and I think the, uh, the new opportunities are, are the dynamism there, right? There's a lot of changes, uh, in the market demands. So you need to be a little bit, uh, more agile, uh, in order to, you know, um, get into new place, new, new opportunities, new sectors, and and I think that's uh, going to be a key for uh, 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 you know Indian family business to to actually not uh, remain but also to flourish more. And I think uh, that's going to be a key. And it's also a task for our generation. Um, and uh, I think it's a great way to wrap up the meeting. And I think you know today um, I, I learned a lot. Uh, first, you know, trying to understand what what's the problem with the uh, uh, Gen Z population, but. Uh, I think what needs to be done is to actually, uh, the problem is ourselves. We need to educate ourselves. We need to understand the tools better so we could give these Gen Z uh, the right advice uh, and how to manage their relationship with the internet. So uh, thank you, Neha. Uh, it's been a great chat. Uh, uh, I heard you you graduated from Stanford. I'm sure that we have a lot of common friends. I'll try to find you on Facebook. Are you, on Are Facebook? you in Stanford as well? You in Stanford as well? I'm not from Stanford, but I have a lot of friends um, ah, okay. so around yeah, your I age. So I'm uh, so I'm assuming that you know some some of these people. Are you on Facebook? Or? Yeah, I'm on Facebook. I'm okay, on Facebook. I'll find you on Facebook. LinkedIn, LinkedIn. Great connecting. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.